What's up, everybody? We are back, man, to the Chef Table Podcast on Cut, the CMB show, the CBJ show. CBJ. John's on vacation. Uh, he'll be back shortly. You know, I checked on him today. He's out partying. He said, you know, you got a line of females up. I hope I'm not dry snitching, actually. Let me just stop. B, what's going on with you? I'm doing well, Chef. How you doing? What's going good, man? You, so good. you you big time acting now, right? Big time, little time. I ain't got my SAG card yet, but, I'm, you know, I'm out there. Okay. Yeah. 750K? 750 baby okay all right yeah. which which kid is it is that the the main it's chick actually box the, uh, or is side it chick box. the side chick the box okay we started with that one's still going crazy yeah i don't know about that name man you don't get in trouble for that name <clears throat> or you so just say it's business my baby girl actually don't want me to keep making skits because of the the backlash between her and her her friends or whatever okay you know? like how he making the side chick and the main chick and you ain't <laughs> none of them like oh shit you know but i'm still me i'm a sagittarius so okay. i do what the I want to do most of the okay. time. You know? Damn, he's so, a. You, hold on, did y'all hear the self blur? The, yeah, the, I did that was myself. that was fire. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah, all right, man, we got a special guest sitting in front of us, man. He represents the Court Cafe. You oh. know what I'm saying? One of the hottest brunch spots in LA. The hottest. The hottest. You yeah. know, and uh, yeah. if you guys watch Grubby yeah. and Sunny, you know they got the Court Cafe in Vegas, but obviously they can't be in LA all the time. So, you know, they got somebody who's the face of the one in LA, and we got him here. You know, I'm glad he came on. I told him, too. I was like, man, we had Mel. We had Grubby and Sonny, man. I feel like it's not complete without him because he is part of that three-headed monster team. Yeah. I I hate saying three-headed monster. It just sounds a little, no diddy-ish, but. Uh, yeah. A little diddy-ish? A little diddy-ish, yeah. yeah sure. Sidebar, by the way, I, I I just found out, you know, L.A. term calling somebody a weirdo is like fighting words. You can't. Yeah, now, sure, I, sure. I didn't know Freaky was one of them. Nah, so you know you can't. Yes, a new one. Yes, a new a new one. one you know. Be like that boy is freaky. freaky. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we make sure. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, man, let's get into <laughs> it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we got the man, Chef Ken, in the building from Court Cafe. Let's clap it up for Chef Ken. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's going on, man? How you doing, man? Good, man. I'm glad to have you here, man. man thank you for having me. Man. Did you work yeah. today? No. You had today off? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's that's I mean, weird well, because this dude work every day. It depends. It depends. I was gonna say that I work every day, man. Yeah. It's really no off day. Okay. Yeah. He seemed like he worked every day because as soon as he came in, he went straight to the tequila. He's like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, give me that. Give me that. I was at home with them kids, man. Oh, he's like, oh how many yeah. kids you got? I uh, saw so all day five. Okay. You know? All right. Yeah, all day five. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, he's not just swinging breakfast, he's swinging meat yeah. too, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. I didn't swing for all of them, but I got to count all of them, man. Oh, you, know, you got to count all of them. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Good, man, good, man. Good job. All right, man. Well, welcome to the podcast, man. We happy to have you on. So we're going to get right into it, man. No ditty. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and let everybody know where you from, who you are. All right, man. My name is Chef Ken. I represent Eaglewood, California, born and raised. Um, Eaglewood. You know, you know what? Always up to no good, man. Yes, sir. Um, I represent the Court Cafe, um, both L.A. and Vegas. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's who I am, man. Okay. Uh -huh. I know Brandon knows you as somebody else, right? Uh, yeah, the slider guy. I the mean, slider that's, guy. That's how yes, I was introduced to Ken for sure. You okay, know? but I, I've watched the growth, you know, from uh, him cooking with the Taco Mel shirt on. I'm gonna have to stop you right. Had, oh, um, no, I gotta, I gotta oh, stop you right there. I watched, I watched the growth. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> we, I can't Ball. let you do that. Yeah, I can't Ball. let you. Yeah, Ball. go Ball. ahead. Yeah, Ball. go ahead. I watched the glow up. You know? Okay, thank so, you. Um, I seen him with the Taco <laughs> Mel shirts. You know, I seen him uh, when Nipsey had his. Um, Thing on Slauson and Crenshaw, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I've been, I've been checking them for sure. Okay, yeah, call definitely. me Mr. Everything, man. Mr. Everything, you never know where you're gonna see me, man. Yeah. I'm a okay. part of everything. My hands on everything. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. Yeah, well, okay. So speaking of hands on everything, do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, sorry. Man, come on. It's, we live yeah. in this pause culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch everything. Yeah. <laughs> Let's jump into the the slider guy. So is that what people was was that a brand you? That was your first brand you started, right? Yeah. That was How my did first that start? Name. So, um, so I used to drive trucks for a living, mm -hmm. um, you know, bobtails, big rigs. I hated that job. Um, I had sleep apnea at the time, didn't know it, didn't want to kill nobody. So I had to jump yeah. out of that field. Um, I was sitting there, Instagram, watching Spank. That's my boy, yeah. Mel. That's not my that's not my blood brother, but that's my brother. You know what I mean? Watching them mm -hmm. early on doing their things. That's when Mel used to be over there on Compton Boulevard and stuff like yeah. that. I was like, man, I gotta get up out of here and do this, man. Guy, he was just in. Just yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and I've always had a passion for cooking. It's something that I always did since I was younger. Okay. Um, I used to watch cooking shows as a kid. Like, man, when I get some money, I'm gonna cook this stuff, man. Yeah. So, you know, it was always a passion for mine. I just didn't know how to make no money from it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, once I, I made the decision to leave my my job driving trucks, I started by selling um 
breakfast burritos and stuff to my co-workers because I used to have to be at work five, six o'clock in the morning. Um, I would get up two thirty, three o'clock in the morning, make a bunch of breakfast burritos, breakfast scrambles, put them in a little hot. You was killing it, huh? Man, killing it. I know it, somebody man. selling breakfast burritos. For, man, five. If you got a four, five, six in the clock morning job, bro, we are starving at that hour. You mm-hmm. just don't know why. You just exactly. starving. And if I would have knew what I knew now, I could have charged a lot more because I was charging like five, six dollars oh, a burrito, man. bro. If I would have knew what I knew yeah. now, yeah. like I could have really cleaned up. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. but even with that, I was still making more money. Like I, I eventually got to the point where I was making more money selling those than I was. Off of my check, so that was like all the motivation that I needed. Like yeah. right. you knew, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like it's time to go. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I got my little cart. I started doing little club events and stuff like that. I was selling um the uh, the breakfast burritos outside of my job, you no, know, yeah. for a minute. And then at that time, that's when Mel just got the pop up shop on Cimarron. Yeah. He's just like, man, why don't you come? No, come help me out with this. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, eventually, I started <laughs> over there at Taco Mel helping him out with Cimarron. Then I started selling the breakfast burritos and stuff out of the um, the Avalon location when we moved over there. Okay. Um, and that's what really you know jump started my whole you know my whole you know cooking culinary career. cooking yeah, career. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I didn't know you was in the game that long. You've been in the game for a minute then. For a while, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I've been I've been the guy quietly just in the back behind, you know, the, scenes. behind mm-hmm. the scenes, yeah. you know, getting my hands dirty. Okay. Yeah, for sure. He was that guy in, in, from the back getting his hands dirty. Wow. That's all I oh, heard. Wow. Yeah, that's wow. all I heard. I, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. But yeah, that eventually, you know, turned into the slider guy. Okay. Um, I started doing club events, doing the sliders and everything. And then, Sweet. Yeah, so yeah. And eventually that went to a food truck. And food truck, a trigger word. Uh, we had a couple people with food trucks on here. You know, some success, yeah. you know, some, you know, everything has, you know, trial and error, failure when it comes to food trucks. Yeah. I want to ask you, because I like to, you know, people that have food trucks come on and say, can you just give them like a real life or you're like, you know, kind of give them your daily schedule mm-hmm. so they know. Because a lot of people want to open up food trucks. They go on Instagram, they see Brandon, they see you, they see Mel. They're like, oh, I could do this. Yeah. I can make this. I'm going to get a food truck. Exactly. Walk them through your schedule. Yeah, so I always say, man, if you looking to jump into the food truck lane, do your research first. Um, build a brand first. I would say my daily uh, routine every day, I would literally get up 4 o'clock in the morning, get to the commissary like 4.30. You got to fill up the ice, fill up your propane, get gas, clean up the truck if it wasn't clean. Now you got to go to Restaurant Depot, Costco, wherever you got yeah. to go, pick up your inventory, got to prep. I used to open at 11 o'clock in the morning. 11, 11, between 11 and 12. And my days would literally start at 4 o'clock in the morning. And then we opened 11 to 8. I couldn't hire a lot of people because, you know, it's a food truck. You right. can't yeah. have a, a full staff right. on there. So. Like two, two, three people max. Exactly. Max. But that means two, one, three people got to be small. Exactly. Yeah. And, I, and I'm all, was all, I was bigger at the time. So it's like, you know, I'm already a fluffy one on the truck. Can't have too many. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know I mean, them trucks is hot. So, um, yeah, so... There, and there was times that I would work that truck by myself because, you know, people call off on the truck. You already short staff, mm-hmm. right. so you just got to do what you got to do. You know yeah. what I mean? So, you know, I, my days went in. We would close at 8. By the time I got home, it was not like probably like 10, 11 o'clock sometimes. Mm-hmm. Then starting all over again, 4 o'clock the next morning. Six days a week? Seven Six days, days a week? A week. Okay. And I had, you know, my ex was pregnant with my son at the time. So, you know, that, bro. He was it, getting it in. Bro, yeah. it was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot, yeah. man. So, yeah. you know. For anybody who's trying to get a truck, I always just say, man, if it's for you, it's not for everybody, but before you commit and mm-hmm. jump into that lane, really do your research, you know, learn the business, build your, build your, your brand um, up. build your yeah, brand up. That's sure. the most important thing. I mean, you you just cut out half the people that want to get one by saying you started at four in the morning. Yeah, because that's hard. That's, that's right. just get that's just getting to the truck, and making like sure it it's be, clean. It should be a sin to have to wake up before five o'clock. In yeah, the every yeah, day. Like, every day, bro. It's it's horrible. And I know busy nights. You probably got home later, like midnight, huh? Exactly, because it's like, man, you you want that money, so it's mm-hmm. like yeah, if it's eight o'clock and you got people still pulling up, like, all right, yeah. we, I'm just gonna keep it going, bro. Mm-hmm. Keep it going. You know what I mean, so and then wait. So I've never been on a food truck. So at the end, say you you ready to go, but mm. you still have the fryers on. Do you have to wait until all that oil cools down before you take off, or how does that work? Nah, you could. Um, they got the little things on there that you could close them. You can close those. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Cool, so cool. you um just turn it off, close yeah. it. Yeah. Nothing. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Or you could drain it. You know. All right. Mm. Shit. You gotta get the little metal thing. Oil is scary you know. for me. Yeah, I, man, I'm gonna burn myself. Plenty of plenty times. of times. My first event, um, I did a you know I grew up with Sir and D Smoke. 
So okay. I, I did a, I don't know why that smoke convinced me to this. I did an event on a rooftop for him. <laughs> and I, man, I had a whole thing of grease and I didn't realize that the grease got to cool down. I don't know why I didn't yeah, think about yeah, that. Yeah, it got to cool Burnt down. my whole arm yeah. up, man. Like, so I have yeah. a, I have a, uh, I hate grease. Right. <laughs> I, hate, I hate grease. Hey, so you, so you don't air fry the chicken or nothing? Are you still fried in grease? Yeah, I still okay, okay, it, okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's get to Court Cafe, man. Yes, sir. I know a lot of people that go there, man. My mom has like a domino little crew. They go Fridays. I got homies that go there. It's dope. I remember I put when I posted it, man. A lot of people hit me up, man. Yo, I love that spot. I love that spot. Yeah. Walk me through the Court Cafe. Let's start with the staff, man. Shout out the staff. Yeah, man, shout out to my staff. We really got, man, we have a, a great staff in both locations, L.A. Mm -hmm. and Vegas. You know, um, my L.A. location, those are my ones I deal with on a regular basis. But my my, you know, my, my manager, Damo, um, my kitchen, man, my manager, Pedro, Rafa, Eric, Yvonne, Damien, them dudes, man, they really hold us down. They really work hard for us, man. Um, and plus they deal with me on a regular basis because, you know, I'm, man, listen, I'm, I'm all about customer experience, mm -hmm. so... Like if I see any little thing, I'm about customer service and I'm also about like the quality and everything remaining the same. Yeah. So like you drop the ball on those things, you gotta hear my voice. You no, know, early in the morning, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, but they, they really work hard for us and they deal with me, so. Okay. Uh, shout out to them, man. I've, I've personally seen that too. I've been to Vegas, I've been to LA and the experience is the same, baby. I like it. Absolutely. I like what y'all doing for sure. The food is the same too. Food is the same. Okay. Uh, I think Grubby cooked for me personally in Vegas. I don't know, but <laughs> okay. uh, he came and brought me something out. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, but, yeah the food, yeah, the food was fire in both places. For okay, sure. yeah, okay. Right. What's your favorite dish at Court Cafe? Um, like, a, like if I'm going in there, like, what am I getting? Gotta be the Chef Ken special, man. Okay, what's the, the Chef, Chef Ken, Ken special? special? What is that? Man, that's mm. the, the three hot cakes and the and the three wings, man. Okay, had to make it fat and fluffy like me, man. <laughs> <laughs> which, which butter do you uh, serve with the Chef Ken special? Man, peach cobbler butter. Peach cobbler. Okay, peach cobbler you butter. know what? Walk me through all the butters, man. Let's let's go around and uh, walk me through all First of them. Of all, yeah, that's not butter, man. That's ice cream. Yeah. yeah okay. Just, okay. It's it's really butter, but yeah, that, it tastes like ice cream, right. man. But the the butters we have. My favorite, the peach cobbler butter, mm -hmm. um, and we real we use real like we cook down a cobbler, okay. wait for it to cool down. We yeah. mix it in with that butter, so it's that's authentic. Oh, that's crazy. Um, that's crazy. Um, so okay. then you got the brown sugar butter. That's yeah. like that's actually our most popular one, the brown, brown sugar. sugar. Mm -hmm. um, then we have our strawberry butter. That's like strawberry ice cream. Mm -hmm. Um, then we have our blue pebble, which is made with um, fruity pebbles. No, I'm wow. sorry, that one's made that's with the, Captain Crunch the, berries. The, okay. Is that the light blue one? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's made with Cap Captain Crunch berries. Then we have our uh, a pink, a pink berry one, which is made with uh, fruity pebbles. Okay, now I know y'all next to uh, the dispensary, right? Is that how y'all coming up with all this? <laughs> now we was there before. Damn, man, we, we was there before the dispensary. Yeah. But, yeah. How does the does the dispensary being there hurt you or help you? Um, so it it it's, it's pretty been pretty consistent. It's yeah. it's definitely helped. I think well our um our except four twenty obviously. Four twenty, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't even mention that, crazy. man. That, oh yeah. my god, man. So, uh, that that shopping center definitely does well because you have everything that you need. You got yeah. if you want to go get some tree, go to the dispensary. Mm -hmm. You hungry, yeah. go to the court. Yeah. While you wait on your food, go to Seven yeah. Eleven, get your wraps and everything. Sit in the car, roll up. <laughs> when your food is ready, go ahead, smoke, eat. Man, it's just right. a perfect mix, man. Yeah. So okay, yeah, yeah. everything you need. Yeah, yeah man. How's the experience working with, because uh, I know Mel and Grubby, both of them, you know, they both came on here, and they, two different people, Mel is so chill, laid back, I look at him and like the business dude, you know, yeah. Grubby's very passionate, man, and yeah. I and I tell people all the time, Grubby is not about to sacrifice anything he's built for anybody, he go crazy if you have to, how is it, how is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, how is it working for both of them, and what's your relationship with each one? Yeah, so, my relationship, I'll start with the relationship, mm -hmm. um, Mel, me and Mel, we're not blood brothers, but that's my brother. His mm -hmm. mama, my mama. You know what I mean? Me and Mel have a relationship over 20, 22 years. That's um, so that's like, regardless, the business go bad, anything, me and him still got to see each other on Christmas. You know, so that's my relationship. Grub, um, Grub, just being around in the game, um, we've always crossed paths. Right. I remember our first um, pop-up that we did, that was the the first Taste of Inglewood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Blue Kitchen was right next to us at Taco Mill. Mm -hmm. And, like, I just remember Grub. Grub is, you gotta respect Grub because, like you said, he's passionate. Mm -hmm. So he's all the, he's we're the same in a way. Yeah. It's just, I'm comrade in him, you know, so. You like he, a mix of both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so Grub is like going up and I'm looking at him, I'm like, bro, I really, I really mess with him, yeah. man. Cause he's like, he, 
they might not get it, but I get it I because he's just it. all about, you know, man, we got to make sure that these customers are right, this food got to be right, mm -hmm. blah, 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 and all Perfection. that. So. Yeah, so that made me like really like respect him, and then he was just also someone who I looked up to in the yeah. in the in the game because I felt like we we thought a lot alike. Even mm -hmm. like today, I was just in Vegas with him, and I told him, I'm like, bro, we think so much alike. You would think we're actual blood brothers right. because we have so many of the same ideas. So it's just like you know that Spider Man meme mm -hmm. of uh, you know them pointing point at, at each other. other. Yeah, That's yeah, like yeah, me yeah. and Grub, you okay. know. So. So that's why, you know, he, he really took on the big brother role with me mm -hmm. um, and, you know, really took me under his wing and, 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 you know, we bounce a lot of ideas off each other, but he's helped me grow and helped me grow confidence in a lot of things. Mel, great as far as the business. You know, Mel, he knows what he's doing as yeah. far as, you mm -hmm. know, the business. So the working relationships, they just work. You know, we all know our positions. There's no ego involved. Mm -hmm. um, certain things know that Mel might lack or Grub might lack, I might be great at and vice versa. So it just works. And then mm -hmm. we also, you know, we, again, back to the roles, Grub is the genius when it comes to being a chef. He's like the old Kanye, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. Cooking up, <laughs> cooking up just that, that crack, you know what I mean? Yeah. And Mel, knowing the business part and me being the muscle, right. it just worked out. You know, and also Sonny. Sonny, you know, Sonny just, you know, being me and Sonny are a lot, a lot like on the business part two like being on the back end making sure like just operations right. is running right like mm -hmm. we talk all the time like yeah. this is what needs to be done and blah 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 so me and Sonny run a lot of the plays That's dope. you know when it comes to like the business stuff across everything blue kitchen taco mail you know in the court cafe of course yeah. you know so okay yeah. is there something at the court cafe that you feel like you can improve on or change or are you very satisfied where it's at right now I'm, I'm never going to be satisfied. I'm always thinking of ways that we could definitely grow and, and get better. Mm -hmm. um, customer experience, like, I'm always looking for ways to, to enhance the customer's experience and give them, like, just, I want it to feel like, I want people to come there and be like, yo, the food is bomb, but, man, the vibe was fire, too. Like, I feel go. like mm -hmm. a lot of restaurants, they yeah. hit and miss on one or the other. Yeah, Either yeah. the food is great, but the vibe was whack, or the vibe was good, and the food was whack, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So... I want to always enhance on our experience when it comes to that. Um, as far as the food, one thing me and Grell were never satisfied with the menu. Like yeah. the menu is great. Yeah. No lie. And we we gonna keep whatever is is working, but mm -hmm. you know, we, we never wanna be that restaurant that's thirty years open for thirty years and we got the same right. exact menu, mm -hmm. same exact everything. You gotta grow with the culinary world, you know what I mean? So you agree with that? No, about owning the restaurant? Yeah, for sure, yeah. You gotta stay competitive, you gotta stay ahead of the the game, you know, for sure, definitely. Yeah, he yeah. doing it. Yeah, I, yeah, I see yeah. you, man. He, yeah. he constantly adding mm -hmm. stuff to that menu, so, man. And, you know, every man. month it's something new. Exactly. Something come off, something come back on. You know, you got to just play around with it and see what the people want. Okay. Oh, my yeah. burger's fire, bro. Yeah, for sure. Trust Thank me, you. it was fire. First time I had it, I was just telling him. Yeah. Bro, I, I pulled up. <laughs> I yeah. got the, got that old my Luther, bro, and I literally I I took it to go. And yeah. I went to eat it in my car, bro, right by that little alley thing. I didn't even make it out the alley thing, bro. <laughs> and I, bro, I pulled yeah, over yeah. and I just like, bro, this this thing is crazy. That's dope. That's why I had to stop coming. Yeah. That's, so yeah. good, <laughs> That's, That's why I'm on Brandon all the time, man. Yo, I, I always tell him, man, their oh my burger needs to be everywhere. Yeah, you sure. need to be everywhere. For sure, man. Yeah, sure. so. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of Court Cafe in the menu, man, let's get into our first game while we got them right here. Yes, okay. Sir. So I'm going to let me introduce the game to you. So it's called What Would They Order? Okay. We play this game with everybody. Okay. We're going to put some celebrities up on that screen right there. Mm -hmm. All you're going to do is based off who the celebrity is, mm -hmm. you're going to tell me what would they order if they come to the Court Cafe and why. Okay. okay. For sure. Let's go to our first celebrity right here. Dre and Michelle. Now, Dre and Michelle has been in the news quite a bit because, you know, she having a kid with a young NBA rookie yeah, who okay. she's 20 plus years older than, I believe, same age. The dude that got her pregnant is the same age as her son. Wow. Okay? That's wild. So you might want to throw a kid's meal in there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Dre and Michelle. Yes. Jack, and if they have been there before, feel free to let us know. But what will she order at Court Cafe and why? Uh, she, she would like she would get like a pan fried. Shrimp and grits. Okay. Yeah. Pan uh, fried she, shrimp. She needs something light, but also full of flavor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can I can picture that. Yeah, man. Well, she's smiling like she really heard you say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Pull up, Dre. <laughs> I got you. Sure. All right. Next one. Drizzy Ooh, Drake. Now, 
Drake's in the media because he's getting flamed. But what would Drake order? Or is he flamed? Uh, he don't want beef, so I ain't gonna say the flame. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh. uh, no, that was a good one. That was a good one. That was a good uh, one. Let's see, what would Arby like? I give Arby our catfish po' boy. Okay. okay. Yeah, for sure. What Everything. About drink? Yeah. About to drink? Yeah, what, what kind of drink? Would oh, drink? definitely a strawberry lemonade. Strawberry. <laughs> yeah, no ice. <laughs> no ice. <laughs> no, no ice, no yeah, ice, huh? Yeah. yeah. Right. He gonna ask yeah. you, is this refillable before he order it too, right? <laughs> for sure. For sure. Is this so. refillable? <laughs> he gonna sing it to us. All man. right, next one. Kendrick. Oh, Kendrick. Yeah. Kendrick want all the smoke. Yeah, yeah. he do. Kendrick gonna get the filet mignon lobster burger. Wow. Extra cheese, extra onions. And he gonna get some chicken and waffles. Damn, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, you hold on. Need he a all with that one. Yeah. yeah Wait, so. but before we go to the next one, tell me about that burger you just said. The the filet mignon lobster yeah, burger. Yeah, just just tell me what's all on there. No, Man, I haven't listen, know. this you is break it all the way down. Yeah, so go ahead. We literally grind up the beef tenderloin, mm -hmm. um, which is filet mignon. Um, Got to get that fat on there too. Yeah. Then we form it into burger patties. So think of like a <clears> double double from In and Out. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's two beef patties. We do put the grilled onions on there, American cheese, and then we throw a six ounce of deep fried lobster tail on it with our uh, garlic. No, that's not the garlic aioli. That's our um, jalapeno aioli mm -hmm. that we throw on there. Man, it's fire. It's that hell, thing bro. go crazy. Crazy. You had it, huh? I had it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I promise you. Crazy. crazy. Do, when, you, when you go places, do you make sure no matter where you go, if they have a burger in the menu, you try it? No. No? Yeah. Uh, I, I used to be like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah not no more. Like but that. now, hardly, I, I I don't even eat burgers like that. Yeah, I you forgot. Know, so, when but, he first came yeah, on, he yeah, broke but, the news to the world. But when I go burgers. to an established place, mm -hmm. yeah. for sure, I'm going to try a burger. Yeah, like, no for sure. You know, definitely. Yeah. 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 And that was one that I had to try. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I used to be like that. I used to have yeah. to have burgers everywhere. No, I ain't. That's why I ended up at my burger, bro. Yeah. Brandon a super foodie, man. He's eating everywhere, man. I eat a lot of places, Yeah, for sure. Heck yeah. Definitely. All right, next one. Salt, Salt Bay. Bay. Damn, what was Salt Bay want? Ah, <laughs> uh, y'all got me on that one. Yeah, uh, yeah you you know, because you we we obviously know you you I'm created the menu with a little less flavor. That's what that's but all that's I was gonna, gonna say. Be hard. Probably the uh, the build a breakfast. There we go. Build a breakfast with a chicken sausage. Yeah, you know what I mean, sprinkle yeah. a little. <laughs> hey, his restaurant in the set though, man. Listen, he got one with that one. Okay. The one in Vegas. You been to it? Mm -hmm. I haven't been. Bro, no. yeah, mm -hmm. that that it's fire, bro. It man. is. Yeah, it's fire. All right. For sure. At oh. least the one in Vegas. Okay. Yeah. Hella expensive, but they fire. Yeah, he just took off. I mean, just I don't remember ever hearing or seeing about him like when I was coming up in the culinary game. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is he a social media chef or is he a real chef? I don't know. I, really I don't know, know if he's a real chef. Okay. I know he started because he was cooking for Diddy. Yeah. That's what made him like go viral. Okay. Because that's where he did the little salt thing at one of Diddy. Diddy's parties or something. Diddy. Oh, so he's gonna get subpoenaed for uh, sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> he, he definitely <laughs> is. All right, salt so bay. Next one. Canelo. Canelo Ooh. Alvarez. Y'all watch that fight? Nah, I, I didn't even see the fight. Oh, it was weekend. a good one. He schooled him, man. Uh, Canelo. Canelo gonna get our breakfast tacos. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 now, are they spicy? You got any sauce on there? Nah, we need to add that mole on there. Oh, we need to add that mole. Okay. Yeah. Chris, Chris had us had me and Mel in the kitchen. He, yeah, he, yeah. he was taking us to school. I man. was supposed to come yeah. in night too. Yeah. yeah. Pause. Yeah. Damn, I, st I still came. But no, nah, we did. Go. <laughs> no, but we do got a, a salsa verde that we put on the side for okay. it. So, but it's not that spicy. But yeah, he'll get the breakfast tacos with all the meat. Some yeah. Damn. Hey, I'm gonna pull up on you on Court Cafe, man. We're gonna bring the camera and I'm gonna work with you a shift, and we gonna just mess around, and have some fun. Yeah, heck yeah. yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. So, me being who I am, I don't think of myself as a local celebrity, and mm. I know Chris gets this too. But when we outside, a lot of people recognize us, and the love is like really shown. Like how do you, how do you feel like how do you feel about that? Like do people come up to you? Do they walk up to you? Like what's up, chef? Can I take a picture with you or something yeah. like that? You know? Yeah, I'm I'm still getting used to that, man. Yeah, I'm still I'm I'm still man I'm still Kenny from the, from the city, man. Right. So right, right. I'm I'm really it, I appreciate it, and especially the love that I get around the city. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, just lets me know like I'm doing doing something right you know what i mean because it's, it's always love and especially right. when people they tell them about the their experience with the restaurants and stuff like that or even just from my content and everything yeah. you know it, it's definitely appreciated but I'm, I'm still getting used to it man that's all yeah man i was i was out today filming with uh our other channel that we got mm -hmm. and about five uh three people walked up to me at the beach and was like man we see you out here 
we don't never see a lot of you know people off Instagram and it was like it's great to see you can I t- shake your hand can I take a picture with you yeah. and that kind of like made me feel real good today you know yeah. I was like damn it's really crazy how people really pay attention to you because of social media you know yeah. and it make yeah. you make you really like stop to think like damn it's really people watching so it's watching you so know. I gotta yeah. you know it, it puts a different type of battery in your bag mm-hmm. you know what I mean? yeah like you want to yeah. come with it all the time yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah he got you he got you <laughs> yeah <laughs> if, if one thing I've learned from being better I used to be horrible with social media mm-hmm. I'm talking about posts like I don't know if you look at my page I, I'd have six nine month gaps no posting yeah you know I just use social media for memes or whatever but once you start becoming a face of something mm-hmm. a brand or whatever you're doing you start to realize people do watch you exactly. all the time. Exactly. So yeah. exactly. And people, will, I mean, we was, I like to tell this story when we did Tabitha Brown's birthday party. Mm-hmm. People from out of the state was coming up to him asking, hey, does that OMB stand for Oh My Burger? Yeah, I love that place. Like, yeah. 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 So, yeah, you know, we got crazy. people that don't even live out here yeah. coming up to him asking them. So, that's love. Different. Yeah. It's totally different. And I don't know if I said this earlier, but I do look at Kenny as the face or Kenny, I'm sorry. Jeff yeah. Ken, 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 okay. Ken, yeah. I look at him as the face of the court cafe out here for sure. Oh, yeah. When I think of Taco Mel, I think of Mel. When I think of Blue Kitchen, I think of Sunny and Grubby. But somebody say, yo, I'm going to court cafe, he instantly pops up in my, fi- my, right. my head. You know what I'm saying? Love no man. diddy. But he's definitely the face. <laughs> so... Yeah, man. Um, so you you guys get like I know you I saw so I'm a big fan of Sky from Black Ink. Yeah, you, you guys get celebrities that come in there. Yeah, yeah, we get okay. a lot of celebrities. I just like me personally, I like to treat everybody like like it's home. Yeah. Oh, yeah so yeah. it's like I don't even like 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 I don't post, I don't talk about it. But mm-hmm. like we get people all the time. Like Lori Harvey was just in there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and we we get every it seems like every week we get in somebody. That's yeah. dope. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I definitely like especially if I'm there or if, uh, if my staff hit me, I right. know like hey man, make sure you take take care of them yeah, yeah. but you know a lot of people like um like for instance Kawhi Kawhi pull up and I, I have a personal relationship with Kawhi's brother but he um he'll pull up just like on some regular like I, I told him last time like why don't y'all text me let me know like mm-hmm. y'all pulling up yeah, yeah. he in there just like a regular person and some yeah people and sitting in the middle of the floor you know what yeah, I mean it's yeah, like yeah. bro you Kawhi Leonard bro. Yeah. first of all mm-hmm. you big as hell so, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah you standing yeah. out yeah. but it's like man yeah so I, I definitely like just try to give him like a a real at home experience. That's you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Okay. Now I want to talk about the the content creator side of uh, Chef Ken. Yeah. I noticed the content is you really heavy on that right now. You That's invested right. in the camera. You mm-hmm. know the way you film it. What made you What made you want to go that route? Man, it was it was it's a long journey, man. Because I've I've always been like. I've been, sh- I'm always shy with the camera. Mm-hmm. It took me a long time to get like comfortable in front of the camera. And then when it came to content, I think I would just always overthink it. So it was something that I would play with, play with, just do with my phone and stuff like that. And then it wasn't until really last year, you no, know, my girl, my girl, um, her sister is a, um, an influencer and she just sees the things that her sister does. And she's like, man, you really like, you have personality. Mm-hmm. Like, like people say I have a voice. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then she's like, and then you're dope. Like she's sitting there eating all the food, you no, know, picking up weight, you know, because of me, <laughs> she's like, man, you need to like show right. these dishes. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So she really like was the one who like put that battery in my back and gave me the confidence to really like just start That's posting. Dope. I started with one. I was like, oh man, this, this look, like, people kind of reacting to it. Mm-hmm. Then the first one I kind of had go viral, I made like randomly a, a, a Philly cheesesteak out of a filet meat. I mm-hmm. saw that one. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah. That, that went up. And that's when I realized like how social media work. Like it wasn't even about the food. It was just the fact that right. you know people from Philly they so sensitive and get oh, pissed man. off yeah. that yeah. anybody yeah. is touching a prized dish yeah. in the Philly cheesesteak, and that just went up. You know, so that's what kind of like motivated me. And then I just got more and more confident with it. And you know, it went from just the food to like everything. Like just even just telling my story through through social media. Like I had posted one time, you know, because. Yeah. behind the scenes like I might get up at one time I just got back from Vegas but there's been right. times I've driven to Vegas yeah. you know had to go handle things out there and had to drive back right home back. Yeah. you know and it's like people actually want to see that, that. Yeah, yeah people yeah. actually want to see that you know what I mean so from yeah. just the content creation you know standpoint it, it helped me gain the confidence to just you know pull out my phone or pull out my camera and now I'm investing in in, in more mm-hmm. equipment and you know I'm working on no I'm working on a lot of other things so yeah. Well, yeah, I pay I attention to care. social media a lot, yeah. and you know what I've been thinking? That all of us could start it, actually, because we all shop there. Nobody does Restaurant Depot content. Yeah, I do. Yeah. No, I've, I've no, no, no. I'm not talking about, like, you know, the, the show in the cart, what you buy. I'm oh, talking yeah. about getting there, 
Uh-oh. Making videos while you inside there, yeah, what the yeah. price is, yeah. what's yeah. new. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. since you guys shopped every day, because you you was doing something that was funny. You did this thing where you would post yourself in the car, your music on your way to Restaurant oh, yeah. Depot. Yeah. You know, I think people <clears throat> like once you start to bring people in towards who you are, it yeah. atta- and it makes it your enhances the experience, yeah, exactly. right? Because exactly. now if I'm going to the Court Cafe and I know Chef Ken is there. Right off the bat, I know the food is mentally gonna be better because right. I feel like I'm invested in him. I see his everyday routine. Yeah, I see everything, yeah. so it makes the experience better. Yeah, I'm which not is gonna lie. Like I, I remember when I first started doing that, I can see my sales grow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Promise you, like people are starting to come because of me posting and showing my personality with the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. damn, because it's like, more it, personal. People want to be a part of the journey. Like, yeah, a part of your journey. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Not the business in general, but yeah. your journey. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Definitely. You know, you. I, I follow. I've been following you for a long time, yeah. and I rarely saw you. Yeah, I never. Yeah, was, yeah I never rarely been, saw yeah. you. I was like behind the scenes. Like, yeah, I didn't really yeah. want to be seen. You know. Yeah. 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 But and now, now, like, now look know. at him with the Louis Vuitton shades on. He love it now. Yeah, <laughs> he said he, now he said he can't even go to the beach no more. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. Like ex- exactly what Chef Ken's doing. I'm I'm gonna get in that same lane. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, you know, so, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely finna cloud chase off Chef. I'm tagging him in all the videos. Yeah. I'm doing. I'm cloud chasing off <laughs> Chef Ken. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. What's your goal, man? Like, where do you see yourself in the next five to seven years? Um, I definitely want to uh, grow more in the business. I definitely want to step like the content creation side of it. I'm working on like a cooking show right now. I'm, I'm interested in seeing like how that could grow. Yeah. Um, and just you know, continuously build my brand more. <clears throat> you know, to get more into more e-commerce. Um, you know, TV shows. I want to be like Chris, you know what I mean? Get on some some TV shows. Yeah. I finally got the confidence now. No, oh, so I got. I feel hey, like, I feel like I they hit it. me up all the time. Now I can show you my phone. Do we? Sometimes they need new faces. Yeah. Do you know anybody? Do you know anybody? And I send them. So yeah. I'm you know, I, if you want to go that route, I can help you. Hell yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Right. Okay. So that's definitely my my um, goals for the next five years. And then see you know, how much more we can grow the court. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. you know we've already talked about trying to open more locations and yeah. stuff like that. You know. And I'm just like getting more better. Like I've been, I've been taking all kind of classes and everything, just really trying to grow on the business side. There we go. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've been the muscle all these years. Like right. I've, I've worked, like yeah. I've, I've worked at the court. You know, starting five o'clock in the morning, sleeping in there, man. I had an air mattress on the other side with yeah. a heating blanket. You know what I mean? Getting yeah. everything right. So I've, I've done all the muscle part. Now I got a team who handles that. So now it's just all about, you know, seeing where I could take it. You know, by using, you know, my, my brain muscles. Yeah. You know, so. You know, I'm really excited That's for true. the next five years. Okay. To okay. See how we can grow. And I'm assuming with the story, you didn't go to culinary school, right? No, nah, no. Nah, okay. I, was I, I was never good at school, man. <laughs> I okay. Was, I was never good at school. I wasn't a failure, but I was just like the class setting and stuff like mm-hmm. that. It wasn't for me. Plus, you know, I had a kid young, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, to stop working to go to school wasn't for me. So, definitely was self taught. When you now, when you compare yourself to somebody that went to culinary school, do you feel like you are at a disadvantage, or you feel that your experience overpowers that? I feel like the experience, mm-hmm. and all reason why I feel like that. I'm not gonna say, oh, I'll never disrespect anyone who went to culinary school. Like I, like I feel like there's levels to chefs. Right. You know what I mean, and anyone who really took the culinary school route, and it's just like they have so much more information, um, and and techniques and stuff like that. So you can never disrespect that. Yeah. Um. But sometimes I would say, like, from my experience of hiring people who went to mm-hmm. culinary mm-hmm. school, they don't have the experience in the restaurant. You know what I mean? Yeah. So one thing I've done is, like, I've anybody who I've hired that went to culinary art school, I feel like I got a free education because I, I'm learning from them. They don't realize it, yeah. mm-hmm. but I'm sitting there, I'm picking their brains. They, yeah, yeah. they looking up to me and stuff like that. And I'm just like, okay, <laughs> now, how you do that? Show me this, show yeah. me that. So it's mm-hmm. like... You know, it, it also worked, but I definitely, I feel like my experience trumps, you know, as far as in the restaurant, someone who went to culinary art school, but as far as technique and stuff like that, right. nah, you can't you can't beat that. Yeah. You went to culinary art school and you didn't learn anything, you wasted Something your wrong. money and your time. I went yeah. to culinary school with a bunch of people that aren't even in the field anymore mm-hmm. or, you know, aren't nowhere near where you are. And I don't even need, I don't even know if you need culinary school with TikTok, Instagram, Google, yeah. none of that stuff. I'm saying like, you just go type in anything and learn how to do something. Man, yeah, because yeah. I don't think you need corner school. I, did. I, I was before TikTok. I was on YouTube, mm-hmm. and I'm just I'm just always a person who just researches everything. And I'm yeah. like, I man, I have dumb cooking books, and I follow like so many chefs, so many chefs who who went right. to school, or people who I, I just look up to, yeah. and I 
anytime. Like you post anything I want on people, I'm screenshotting it. You post a cookbook <laughs> or mm-hmm. uh, uh, anything, bro, I'm screenshotting it. Yeah. Or Grub will send me some stuff or I'll send Grub some stuff. And right. like me and him, we both, that's why I say we the same because next you know, we look up and we got it. You know what yeah. I mean? Any piece of equipment, I might not waste my money on much. I don't, I'm not big on clothes or none of that stuff, right. shoes, none of that. But I will buy some equipment. It drives my girl crazy because she's just like, when does it stop? Yeah, it but as a chef, no, I'm going to, I need to see what this thing does. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have to master this equipment. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I just yeah. Did you lose your passion for fashion because you wore chef coat every day? That's how I feel. It's like I was never into clothes. Oh, yeah. Once I went to the world of culinary, clothes didn't mean nothing because I'm wearing the black pants and a shirt or a jacket and an apron every day. six, seven days a week. Yeah. So regular clothes just don't appease to me. I want to wear shorts and a shirt on my day off. And my yeah. girl's the only reason why I, I wear clothes. Like, she's the one. Like, me, I've had Crocs, Harachis, sweats, <laughs> and, and a shirt. Because the thing was, it's like, bro, I I got into food not only because I had a passion, because it got girls, bro. Like, mm, yeah. females, they love the dudes who cook. So, being in a restaurant, I could be in there dirty as hell mm-hmm. with some dirty Crocs on, covered in flour. I'm still pulling women. So, that literally, like, oh, I man. lose my desire <laughs> for even trying to get dressed. Because it's yeah. like, why am I putting forth all this effort? Like, yeah. they're going to come anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. 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 No, no, Diddy. No, no pause no on Diddy. that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she got to yeah, say no Diddy. Diddy, yeah. Diddy is some other stuff. Yeah, right? no Diddy, no Diddy, no Diddy. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I can attest to that. I, I think I lost my, my fashion for a while, for sure. Yeah. Especially in the pandemic, man. I was working so much, like, mm-hmm. every single day, yeah. that all I knew was a, a regular blue or white T-shirt. Put that on with some jeans and my Crocs. Yep. Mm-hmm. But, you know, now that we in the, the public and the light, you know, you do, I do got to dress a little different, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm yeah. trying to. I'm trying to get yeah. better at it, man. And then you got to go out with your, with your girl, with your yeah. lady, you know, so you got to look presentable. So yeah, She's yeah. definitely going to stay on my head about that. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, speaking of the pandemic though, how did you how was that for you as a chef? Like how was that experience cuz it was it was hard. It was tough. It was tough um figuring it out at first, but I feel like once we got it figured out, it was cool. I think once the pandemic happened cuz that was literally like our first year mm-hmm. the court. I think we we had barely hit a year when the uh, um the pandemic started. Yeah. So that was an adjustment. Like <clears throat> we're already trying to grow the business mm-hmm. and then we have this thing happen. So I think, like most restaurants, we panicked during the pandemic. Like, we switched our hours. We tried switching the menu, and it wasn't working. I remember, like, it, it was some hard days, some hard nights that we didn't get any sleep. So um, I remember just saying, like, hey, let me try this. Because, you know, of course, we had to resort to to-go mm-hmm. only, you know. So it was like, how does this work? So crazy to restaurant? think about still. It's yeah, still, it's, yeah. It's, 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 like, it's like traumatic for me. It's like PTSD. When I see a to-go mm-hmm. box, I always think, like, how for a long time we had to put that beautiful food in brown in boxes box. yeah, or exactly. whatever type of boxes in. Exactly. And it's just crazy to me. Yeah. But man. go ahead. Yeah, so we um we just I just something like let's let's try this, let's switch, like let's switch our hours back. I'll come in here by myself. I'll come in early in the morning, turn on Uber Eats, open the door, see what we could do. And I like literally I think we wherever we was averaging at the time, we probably within that amount of time we averaged like maybe like two thousand more than we average the whole time we was open Mm -hmm. you know the other way i was watching a lot of netflix this way we was actually working so once we kind of switched things back i was like you guys didn't fall under the patio rule no oh so you guys can do dining like that exactly yeah yeah i just realized the setup yeah exactly and then you know you i think like the patio rule came later on yeah Yeah, initially it wasn't in the beginning you know so it was tough but once we switched it and we figured it out then I feel like the pandemic kind of helped us low key because, that. you know, especially it being our first year, a lot of people didn't have a, they didn't know we were there. They didn't know we were open and then they didn't have a chance to really like come mm-hmm. and try us because they was working. We're a mm-hmm. breakfast restaurant. We're yeah. closing at 3.30 in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. So now everybody's off of work. Now they're pulling up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then that's when we really like, I started stepping up the social media game mm-hmm. and, you know, you know, keeping things consi- keeping things consistent on there, and I feel like it helped because now, like, man, we had lines out the door, and then you know how everything yeah. happens now. Like, you know, all you gotta do is post. Oh, you see people in these lines, and now it's yeah, like that's it. Everybody yeah, wants to start coming. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? They gonna complain about the line, but they still gonna come stand in it. You know what yeah. I mean? So it helps. So by the time the pandemic was kind of like reopening and we expanded our dining area and everything, yeah. it just it was a go from there. So yeah, pandemic yeah. helped us. You know what I would have did on 420? I would have went out there and took like 50 pictures of the line, and yeah. then I would have posted them later. Cut like it made, yeah, made yeah, it seem yeah, like yeah. we popping right now because you yeah. can't tell where the line is yeah, on yeah, 420 because yeah. of the dispensary. Right. Yeah. 
Are you a fan of Yelp? Oh, I hate Yelp. Well, I mean, oh, man. we hate it, but as chefs and as business owners, we can't avoid it, man. Right. Like, my wife used to have to tell me, hey, get off Yelp. Yeah. Because I get addicted to it because I felt like it's over, it, it's dramatized, yeah. but at the same time, it's for a reason. And we've been exactly. in this, you know, we all been cooking for a long time. Exactly. We know that my sales, this is my rule, my sales are my are my good Yelp reviews, right? Because exactly. mm -hmm. if my sales are maintaining or increasing, that's my good Yelp review. Mm -hmm. I've never had a good experience in random Yelp. I just go back. Yeah. All right? Or I tell them, yo, this was a good meal, good experience, I'm coming back. Yeah. I'm going, Yelp is just negative. Exactly. So, how... Do you Yelp watch is what I'm saying? Yeah, so I've had to take a break from it recently. Mm -hmm. Dude, I just have to protect my mental health. Yeah. But, um, so I have a rule with when it comes to Yelp, Google, all of that. It's like, of course, it's from our side, we're going to focus on the negative. Mm -hmm. Like, we could see 10 positive, but that one negative is the thing that's going to eat at us the most. Mm -hmm. So my biggest thing is I know how, how customers are. I know how you know a lot of the negatives are going to run to Yelp mm -hmm. but if I start to see the same thing consistently yeah. over and over time then we have something to address right. you know what I mean then me not being there as much or us not being there as much you know a lot of things could fly under the radar mm -hmm. you know so you know if I start to see like like for instance customer experience if people are saying like hey the customer service sucks and I'm starting to see like one it's okay cool but if I start seeing it two, three, four, five times, okay, then we have issues here that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. So that means I need to clear my schedule and make sure that I'm at the court, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's LA or Vegas, a little bit more so we could you know, work on this. So yeah, I Yelp watch, I hate Yelp, but I'm not one of those who's delusional. Like, yeah, obviously if, if we keep seeing the same thing, we got something that we got to deal with. Yeah, you know? okay. We had Chef Journey from Grits and Waffles on here, right? Mm -hmm. And when I asked her the same question, because, you know, I kind of look at the the Yelp reviews for the people coming on just to talk about some things and see how they handle them. Mm -hmm. uh, issue for her was wait time. Mm -hmm. Now, she explained, you know, on her, her episode, she's in a small space. She doesn't have room for fryers, but fried chicken and catfish is her biggest sellers, but she has a small fryer, that right? Sucks, yeah. So three or four orders of chicken, that's pushing each ticket back 20 minutes. Yeah. So she recently just installed another fryer, and now she has 10, 12-minute ticket times. Mm -hmm. So the reason I'm asking, I, I did notice that ticket times is one of the the one of the ones I see the most on Yelp for you guys. Is is there a reason behind that, or you, just because you guys are busy, it, short-staffed? It, it, it's it's multiple things. It's, mm -hmm. We also we have a small kitchen. Okay. Um, and I think a lot of people they understand like sometimes like the dynamics like how your kitchen has to be um you know put together like meaning like your your fryers there's only so many you could fit because you yeah. have to fit everything under a hood and all of that mm -hmm. and then so with our volume and you know the biggest thing we're from scratch kitchen mm -hmm. um so everything is made from scratch like we're prepping this stuff you know it doesn't have a long shelf life so we have to prep more you know we have to prep less and get it out you know at a certain time so all of these things on top of like being busy and then also the wait times. Like sometimes, especially with the reviews, they talk about the wait time, but what I've noticed is they're, they're counting how long it took them to get a seat in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So if we're busy and they're waiting an hour to even get a seat in the restaurant, sometimes two hours, two, three hours, mm -hmm. depending on how busy we are, now they get in and it might take 30 minutes for the food to come out. Well, it's thirty minutes is not a long time for four. Well, from from hours, scratch, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. the it's the yeah. it's the I've been waiting two hours now. Mm -hmm. It's another thirty minutes. It's yeah. like so, yeah. We're thinking about it from the restaurant standpoint. Like, yeah, yeah. it's only taking thirty minutes, but for the customer who's been waiting, you know, thirty mm -hmm. minutes. I mean, yeah. three hours or two yeah. hours outside, and then now another thirty minutes. They get a little restless, you know what I mean? Okay. Um, but again, we're not perfect. Sometimes we do drop the ball. You know what I mean? Sometimes things happen. Call off, short staff. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's been times I've gotten calls on a Sunday, packed house, and the fryer went out. Damn. So now I'm rushing. First, I'll try to come fix it, yeah. but if I can't get it fixed, now I got hurry up, get to Restaurant Depot somewhere or something else. I, I'm going to post this video because I documented this one day. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> um, go to Restaurant Depot or Charlie's or whatever, try to get a fryer, yeah. then try to get it to the restaurant <clears throat> and get it installed to kind of like speed up the process. So it's like, Man, the restaurant business things happen all the time. Yeah. So that's why I asked because you know this is brings awareness to the situation. Yeah. I want to address something I saw. Yeah. And some people might you know watch this and be like, okay, I understand it, and that yeah. makes sense. Maybe I shouldn't you know be like that if 
if yeah. they got all this going on and they're busy. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah but that's, that's definitely something, even with that, like that's something that I do see too. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I definitely want to address so any way that we can. So it's like, that's, that's when I say my staff, they kind of, they have mm-hmm. to hear my mouth. Because if we don't have any reason for that and we're just dropping the ball, then those are things that we have to address because you guys are not doing your part. Mm-hmm, you know what yeah. I mean? I can't sit here and I shouldn't have to sit here and babysit you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but when things happen, we're just busy and stuff like that. You know, I just try to, I try my best to explain to people why they're there, try to troubleshoot, hey, you know, we're from Scratch Kitchen. But that's mm-hmm. also on the service too. Service yeah, have to yeah. communicate those things. With the with, with the, the customers, because yeah. I feel like that that takes away from customers complaining as much as well. Yeah. If like my thing is, I go to a lot of restaurants. If if a service sets me down, like hey, hey, our kitchen's running a little behind today. It's gonna take about 25, 30 minutes to get your food out. Okay, cool. Right. Now yeah. I know. Mm-hmm. But if I'm I'm sitting down and you don't tell me anything, and I have to constantly ask, like hey, what's going on with the food? What's going on mm-hmm. with the food? Yeah. I'm gonna be a little bit more annoyed, you know what I mean? Right. Or if we just have things that happen, communicate communicate that with the customer. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're short staffed today, you know. And most people, from from what I see, most people understand. Yeah. But it's the lack of communication. Mm-hmm. Right. You have to communicate with your customers, man. Yeah. You know? okay. And that's the thing. That's like people understand. Like most people understand things happen. Yeah. That's that communication is the fine line of them ever returning, and them just. And if they're gonna come back or if they they're not, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So, Being up front with them. Yeah, yeah, just be up front with them, man. Communicate with them. People yeah. understand. You What's know about that, right? Man, all day. Every what do you? Day. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I, I tell my front end, you know, hey, set the expectation up front. So if you think we're behind twenty minutes, let them know, hey, your order's gonna take twenty to twenty five minutes. If it's ready any sooner, we'll text you and you know your order's ready. You know, mm-hmm. so you just have to communicate with the guests and and. Keep them updated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then that way they know because it's like yeah. they, they know. And even in coming back, they'll know. Like if I ever think about coming on a Sunday, let me make sure I don't have to go catch a flight somewhere. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. this is not a place that I'll come because I need to get out in 10, 15 minutes, yeah, especially exactly. if we're cracking. Now, if it's a Tuesday, Wednesday, you come 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, it's not that many people there, you're good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but if you know that we, we cracking, yeah. come on. Like mm-hmm. it's it's not going to happen more likely, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any um crazy employee stories? Ooh, too many. Too many. Um, one good the, one. One. Good Before you one. give us a story though, I don't. Did you watch his episode? This was a while back. His was the first episode <laughs> about. Uh, was his name Kenny? <laughs> his name was Ken. Damn, what was it? Ken. Keenan. 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 Yeah, Keenan. I was like, don't, yeah, don't, yeah, don't, yeah. Don't misrepresent no, no, the no, Keenan. Let me, let me, <laughs> let me just, let me, let me, let me just retell this story so you kind of get the idea. So. Okay. Uh, uh, Keenan was a big fan of uh, getting putting the phone up on FaceTime and and getting action on FaceTime while he was working and prepping, oh, you yeah. know, getting getting twerk video, getting twerk, uh, whole, strip whole tees, porn all that whole yeah, porn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So uh, Brandon Brandon finally uh, let him go. All right. Well, I let him go because he stole from the company. But yeah, okay. but yeah, I, one day I walked in the kitchen. Man, we got an hour and fifteen minute wait time. And that's crazy, you that's know, crazy, like, yeah. it's real crazy. So I get in there, I'm looking at the kitchen display and I'm just scrolling, I'm scrolling, it's just orders, right? And it's, I look at the other kitchen display and he got this phone propped up and I'm looking at a girl at fully naked, fully naked. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's when the Luther was born. Oh, fully God. naked. And this girl, and then it's, he didn't turn the phone off or anything. Dude, like he's trying to cook this crazy. very first order. He's working on the very first order. I'm like, bro, turn the phone off. We got to get all these quarters out, right? Yeah. He could not, like he had to go to the the bathroom. Yeah. He had to go take a, a restroom break then. Yeah. I almost fired him at that point, but I was like, I need somebody. Yeah, you know, yeah, I can knock right all now. these out, you know, but. It, uh, it was crazy. That was okay. my craziest restaurant. Story. Yeah, so now what's yours? I don't know if I could top that one, bro. Man. No, you don't got to top that one. We just wanted to give you an example. I don't think nobody topping that one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's been a lot. I've definitely, like, I've had employees fight mm. um, in the middle of service. Damn. Did like, you break it up or did you watch? Up. I mean, did you watch listen, for a couple listen, seconds? The, 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 the Eaglewood and me watch for a minute to see who got yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And then yeah. it's like, of course, I, I gotta break it. Gotta right. go break it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, stuff like that. I had one guy, man, this guy, man, he literally, he's somebody who I was really just trying to help, man. Right. Like he he had a, a a record and everything, and he would literally, again, it was, it was same thing, ticket yeah. times, and he sitting there having a whole full blown conversation on the phone. And then I come in there in the Might kitchen to work, and I'm like, I'm like, hey, bro, get off your phone. He just he gets upset with me because I'm telling him mm-hmm. to get off the phone. Mm-hmm. And then so he um 
So then we're working, we catch back up. He gets back on the phone. Yeah. I'm like, bro, do you realize you realize who I am, right? right, right, right. Like, you realize, like, I'm the guy who I hired you. I can yeah. get rid of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, you know, once I did eventually have to let him go, he went through a whole rant on Twitter um, talking about how a racist I am. Mind you, he's black. But what? I'm racist because <laughs> just because I have, you know, I have a couple of Hispanic guys in there. Stuff you do like look that. a little Dominican, you know what I'm saying? So hey, I'm you know, side with I'm side with him. I'm hey, side with him. You you, you know, look a little crazy. racist. Every I'm time kidding. I come back, especially from Mexico, when I come back from the DR and stuff like that, I yeah. get hemmed up at customs. Because they, yeah. they, they just, you, uh, yeah. <laughs> when I was in DR, they really, <laughs> yeah. when I was in DR, they really thought I was from there. Like people were surprised yeah, yeah, yeah. and I wasn't. So that's crazy. But Man. I guess. I don't How know. was the DR? DR was fine. Yeah, it was fun. I, I was out there for like two weeks. I didn't tell Chris, but I went for like three days. Yeah, we, we save, we're saving that for the Patreon. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It was crazy, though. Yeah, it was it's crazy. crazy. Yeah. I, I love DR. I just yeah. love traveling, though. Yeah, yeah. I ain't been yeah. to the DR yet. Yeah. You gonna take me? We can go. All right. Yeah, we can okay. Go there for sure. oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah go All to right. Kind of Santa Domingo. Mm hmm. Yeah, What's yeah. the other one? Uh, the other, my boy just put me on to the other spot. I forget start the name. With an S or something. Yeah, start with an S. That's where I was at. I okay. can't think of the name of it, but okay. it was, that that was crazy. Yeah, we're supposed to be going next year. It's his yeah. um his uh he getting married, so it's bachelor uh, party at the uh, Oh, yeah. there you go, okay. Hang up for part four. Yeah, 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 we I'll sneak yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chef Ken, man. Yes, sir. I gotta ask this last question. Okay. With all the stress you deal with on a daily basis, because I know you do, because like I said, we've been doing this for a long time too. Mm-hmm. Call outs, things breaking unexpected busyness shortage of items out of stuff 86 this that whatever do you have some sort of outlet because it's you know mental health is huge man and we don't talk about that in this industry do you have like an escape you know because brandon the cigar lounge is his Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying me video games video games is something that just relaxes me calms me puts me in another world i'm chilling what's your escape for your mental health with everything you deal with on a daily basis uh, drugs, bro. Drugs? Nah, I'm just fucking. With you. <laughs> <laughs> nah. That keeps uh, yeah. <laughs> nah. Um, you know, I'm I'm big on mental health. Um, like I do. Um, I'm in therapy. I do. Um, a lot of journey, journey, journaling. Damn, I'm twisting my words. Journaling. Um, I've been in my spiritual bag lately, so those are things that kind of help me stay balanced. Um, I work extremely hard, so my balance is my my fun life like mm-hmm. the one thing i like to do i like to travel so i'll hop on a plane um that's the dope. Sim- simplest things you know what i mean like i'll go to you know me and my boys we'll go catch a game in another city mm-hmm. i'm a big sports fan i love basketball so i might fly to sacramento and go watch you know the king's game or something like that but it's just all about like having that balance mm-hmm. like, you know times i could just put my phone down and just like be kenny like I like to joke That's a lot, dope. laugh a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? So music is my outlet. I love like I love music. I love concerts, stuff like that. So Okay. okay. I mean, it's just all about finding that balance, man. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, last thing I want to say too, do you have any advice to anybody that's watching this or listening to this that you know want to do what you do or follow in your footsteps. I mean, because we've all been there before. Like I said, you watch Mel and, and Grubby from social media and it, it inspired you to be where you are today. Do you have any advice or words of encouragement to anybody that's thinking about taking that journey to be becoming a chef or working in the restaurant industry? Yeah, man. Just, um, you know, find find what works for you. Find your lane. Um, and just really uh, commit to the work. Don't worry about it. Take your ego out of it. Um, you know, with me, I've always been the type of person I'll do the most dirtiest job. I don't care. You know, if I gotta, I'm the boss, and I if I gotta go wash dishes, I wash dishes. You know, um, and that's always been my my approach and my attitude. You know, um, learn as much as you can, and just take one step at a time. One step at a time. Don't try to hit the home run. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Load up the bases, and you know, and then eventually, eventually, you just get some points on the board. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and you'll get there. Um, and you know, just this it's a journey. You know, when I first started this, I never thought I would be where I'm at today. But, you know, I got here. You know, yeah, so. and you here, and the I'm brand here. is big. Yes, and sir. you Chef Ken. Yes, sir. And you are Court Cafe. My God. And it was yeah. a pleasure having you on, man. We we really want to thank you for having you on, man. Man, appreciate sure. y'all, man. Yes, man. And thank you for those listening. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you next time. Thank you, guys. Peace. Shout out to the Court Cafe. Shout out to Chef Kenny. Shout your Instagram out. Yeah, yeah. So my Instagram is I am underscore Chef Ken. Um, that's on all platforms. Um, check me out on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. 
Um, I got my cooking show coming too, so make sure you subscribe on YouTube. I'm starting that from scratch, man. So is go. that one on OnlyFans or YouTube? Uh, nah, it's just YouTube. Man. <laughs> my, my OnlyFans is my OnlyFans is for all the fluffy, <laughs> fluffy stuff. You fluffy know? stuff. That's why I'm pouring syrup and pancakes on myself, man. So all, all my big ladies, <laughs> catch me over there. <laughs> all right, guys, you guys have a good one. Thank you. Yes, sir.